Here's a case example of a 59-year-old male who has active and chronic ulnar sided wrist pain, and we'll come back to him in a little bit. You can see he has a combination of pain generators. He's got positive ulnar variants. He's got distal radial ulnar joint arthrosis. He's fairly stable, but his CT scan also illustrates a significant amount of derangement. So when we look at surgical treatments for DRUJ arthritis, we, we consider ulnar resection, which <clears throat> is one of the most tried and oldest treatments for arthritis of the DRUJ, and still has a role in my practice. Uh, Save Kapanji is a, is a DRUJ fusion, which I'll talk about. Arthroplasties, there's non-constrained and constrained arthroplasties, and then also salvage options, which I think is an important take-home point, understanding salvage options for these, because while many patients do pretty well, the small percentage that don't can have a very uh, difficult time. Here's a case example of a 60-year-old female nurse who has pretty advanced distal radial ulnar joint arthrosis, as you can see. And again, distal ulnar resection is one of the most common procedures for DRUJ arthritis and probably still the most common that we utilize. The reason being it's technically straightforward. It's a fairly quick recovery. It's less complicated. But, uh, and it does, in some cases, have better revision options than others. But it is, uh, there are some technical aspects that are very important. I try to minimize the amount of bone I resect. I don't take more than one centimeter. Typically, I do this through a dorsal approach through the fifth compartment. Um, you want to smooth and contour those edges so they're not sharp or irritating to the tendons. Um, you stabilize them a very variety of ways, whether it be the pronator quadratus, the, the ECU, FCU, or BR, distal ulnar capsule. I do find, however, that immobilizing these patients is a helpful way to afford stability. And the outcomes, while they, some have reported good outcomes, others have not been as favorable. <clears throat> And this is this patient two weeks post-op, and ultimately at five years post-op, she's fairly pain-free and quite happy. So you can get pretty good results with a, a distal ulnar resection. But there is this common occurrence that, occur that happens with these uh, procedures, and uh, this uh, loss of the cam effect results in penciling, which occurs in virtually all patients. The key question is whether or not this would be painful and whether it will lead to instability. This is an example of a 48-year-old female who's a janitorial worker who had a distal ulnar resection, and even at two years post-op, she has pain, and you can see the penciling, and we'll come back to her in a bit. <clears throat> There's another case of a, a female, 60-year-old, who has rheumatoid arthritis six years past post-DARA with instability and pain, and what do we do now in these cases? And it's important to have an understanding that these, these can happen and have options to offer these patients when they come back. We'll come back to her in a bit as well. I've grown to really like the Save Kapanji procedure. It addresses uh, uh, concerns of ulnar drift of the carpus, particularly uh, not uncommon in rheumatoid patients. It maintains the contour of the wrist better. And uh, here's a case example of a 67-year-old female with ulnar wrist pain. And this, uh, again, that dorsal approach to the fifth compartment, much like we do with the DARA. You can expose the DRUJ, resect the arthritis, impact the bone graft, fix the ulna, resect a segment of it, proximal to where you fix it and um, afford hopefully a, a good fusion. There are some pearls and pitfalls. I'd like to follow Dakey's recommendation of keeping that distal ulnar stump less than 35 millimeters from the, the uh, end of the ulna. Uh, the capsular closure is critical, much like we are with the DARA, and it is possible to resect too much and increase instability. I typically, tim like the DARA, I mobilize these folks an additional two weeks um, and I find that that's probably the most predictable way to keep, uh, keep the owner's stump stable. And Dakey's results were actually very encouraging as six-year follow-up. And our own Mayo experience, which we recently published, has been similar. But there are failures, as you can see, and it's important, again, to recognize that those failures can happen and have plans on how to treat them. If they are unstable, you can consider an interposition or, or a wrap. Um, and then you can see the other salvage options, which include uh, constrained ulnar head, custom ulnar head, one bone forearm, which is uh, um, the end of the line type options. And here, the patient revisited with radiographs on the right side, and she ultimately was happy enough on the right that she, we ended up doing the same procedure on her other side. Arthroplasty maintains a role here in the United States. It's 
Uh, some of the models that are, uh, have been used for, uh, previously are no longer available, but there still are options available nowadays, and particularly that constrained arthroplasty, which is good for salvage options and important, I think, when in, in anyone who treats DRUJ arthrosis. Here's an example of a 48-year-old female as a nurse's aide, and you can do partial, total, constrained, uh, and non-constrained options. Um, again, the indications are for the arthritic patients who are fairly more active, have good bone quality, and you can see this patient one year post-op with good pronosupination and a fairly stable implant. There are complications, pain and stiffness. Here's an example of a patient who uh, initially treated with an ADERA and ultimately went to a U-head and she had ongoing pain. And in these cases, I've learned to adopt the, uh, the interposition arthroplasty as uh, popularized by Dean Soterianos. And this is a good way to bail out for some of these chronic, uh, very painful um, failed uh, arthroplasties and even DERAs or, or SK procedures. Erosion into the sigmoid notch is often remedied best by something like a total U-head or a aptus procedure, as you can see here. And in loosening, you have to think about things like infection, resection. Um, you have to uh, be prepared uh, for a troubling day if uh, trying to take some of these out. The loose ones aren't so bad, but if they have cement, it can be, it can be difficult. Instability is uh, uh, remedied with, uh, again, the BR wrap, which was popularized by Amit Gupta, uh, and Dean Soteriano's procedure, which has been helpful in stabilizing some of these. The DRUJ arthroplasty uh, total as uh, the Schecker implant is something that I've learned to uh, depend on in some of these more complicated revision cases. So in, in terms of treatment of the failed or uh, DARE or SK, I tend to prefer the Soterianus procedure or the Aptus procedure. Very loosely in closing, my anecdotal and loosely scientific uh, decision tree is uh, asking several questions. How overactive is the patient? If they're less active, then I consider resection. More active, I lean towards SK or arthroplasty. What's the stability of the DRUJ? If it's stable, I tend to favor resection or arthroplasty. If they're unstable, the SK. If the radiographs show ulnar translation of the carpus, I prefer the SK. Poor sigmoid notch morphology, I prefer the SK. A better, uh, patients with better bone quality, I think, of arthroplasty. It's important to inform your patients uh, of all these treatment options are fraught with the risk of reoperation. And you can, together with this information in hand and experience, you can partner with your patients to arrive at the best decision for him or her. In terms of the uh, revision salvage options, I tend to, again, prefer the constrained DRUJ or the Soterianos procedure, hopefully avoiding that uh, the dreaded one bone forearm. So in terms of our original case, this was the SK that this patient ultimately got and turned out to do pretty well from that. Thank you for your attention.